What's up, everybody? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Mr. Clutch Sportscast, which has not been existent for the past 14-ish months. So, I apologize for that. That is, that is my bad. Uh, long story short, a lot of stuff happened. I had every intention of getting back uh, to this, to you guys. Um, and like I said, stuff happened. Stuff kept coming up, and I couldn't seem to find the time. And of course, you know, those of you who know me best know that I try and put try and put my heart in everything I do. So, uh, I wanted to give you guys the best product, and I felt that if I was crunched for time, I would not be able to do that. So, again, I apologize for my lack of videos in the past 14 months. That's the first item of housekeeping. I'd like to get out of the way. Secondly, I'd like to pitch you guys an idea for this channel coming up in about anywhere from three to five months. It depends on kind of what happens. Uh, so, the idea is a fantasy football show, or I guess air quotes show. I know, it's not the most original idea, but the way I would do it is maybe a tiny bit different from the way ESPN, uh, NFL, and CBS does it. I think NBC might have one too. Either way, It'd be maybe a little bit different from those guys. I would still look at the hard data. You know, look at where each player ranks within their position, how they do from week to week, look at trends, look at their past performances, all of those things. But I'd also try and watch um, as many games as I could. Or... If I couldn't get to games, I would probably settle for game highlights and specific player highlights. That could get difficult working on just highlights, but I guess it's better than nothing, right? And we should know, because I haven't been here for 14 months. Um, so I would take the raw numbers... And what I see with my own two eyes, put it together, give you guys my best advice, what I'm doing for fantasy, all sorts of things. Um, like I say, it's quite a ways away. Um, they probably haven't considered putting mock fantasy drafts together yet, so we have time to decide officially but please comment down here in the comment box uh, with your guys' opinions on this I look forward to reading them you guys are awesome alright now that we got the housekeeping stuff out of the way I thought today since I have been gone for 14 months I would not talk about the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series and my Dodgers choking again for the second straight year and I'm not going to talk about the New England Patriots winning their sixth Super Bowl or the Los Angeles Rams looking like a bunch of sissies in the Super Bowl or the fact that how the Los Angeles Rams got to the Super Bowl is by a referee being completely blind. Not going to talk about any of that. 
Believe me, I'd like to talk about four and five and three and two and one. But like I said, I haven't been here for 14 months. The Super Bowl is a month old. We're already talking about the new league year starting. I think this week, I think it's March 13th is when, actually no, I'm sorry, it's March 17th that the new league year starts. So a week from today, Antonio Brown will no longer be a Pittsburgh Steeler. So, nice job, A.B. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to talk about any of those things. I'm not even going to talk about Antonio Brown. Even though I could, I'm not going to. Today, I thought I'd talk about the Manny Machado and Bryce Harper deals that were fairly recently penned um, because that impacts a future event, the 2019 Major League Baseball season. Yeah, so I don't have to look back in the past and try and remember all that crap that happened last year. Uh, so let's get right to it. Manny Machado goes to the San Diego Padres on a 10-year, $300 million deal. First of all, that's a crap load of money. Dude's getting paid $30 million a year. He better be, like, smoking balls out of that stadium. From what I hear, it's um, a pretty hitter-friendly park, so he shouldn't have a problem putting up 30, 35, 40 home runs. Just remember Tony Gwynn. Granted, he was a lefty, but point stands. The thing with this deal is, it's, I feel, in my humble opinion, that it's a very future-centered deal. Because there's no doubt that Manny, Manny Machado adds value to the San Diego Padres. <clears throat> Does it make them World Series contenders? No. Not this year. Probably not next year. Maybe. Maybe not even three years from now. Does it make them NLCS contenders this year? No. Probably not next year. Maybe not three years from now. Does it make them NL West contenders? No. Not this year, not next year, and maybe not three years from now. Because in the NL West, you still got the Dodgers and the Rockies. You can thank Arizona for shipping away Patrick Corbin and Paul Goldschmidt. However, I do think that for the next several years, the Padres could make some noise for an NL wildcard spot. Because think about it. Now you got Will Myers, uh, Eric Hosmer, who's the other guy? Hunter Renfro, and Manny Machado. I mean, Hosmer is a freaking World Series champion. Myers, when he's healthy, is one of the better hitters in the league. Renfro's a young guy. He's got some talent. And then there's Machado, who just, I mean, look him up, people. He's got quite a track record. So, I do think they can make some noise for a wild card spot this year. The reason I say that it's a future-centered deal is because right now... I don't feel, personally, I don't feel that they have the pieces that it takes to make a deep run into the postseason. I mean, I could be wrong. There's a Cinderella team every year, right? Some team who ends up in the 
I don't know. Who ends up in the National League Championship Series or the American League Championship Series who's not supposed to be there? I shouldn't say every year. But every few years, there's a Cinderella team that's like, oh my gosh, you know, they weren't supposed to be there at all. Could be the Padres this year. But I'm just saying, I doubt it. The reason it's a future-centered deal is their farm system. The prospects they have coming up from everything that I've heard on uh, MLB at bat, that's an awesome app. If you love baseball, you should definitely go download it. Um, from everything I've heard from those guys, they have a really good farm system of young, talented infielders, um, guys who can hit the ball really well, play good defense. I don't know much about their pitching. I know that they uh, traded away Brad Hand last year, got some prospects in return for him. But even at that, Brad Hand was a closer. So, long story short, I don't think the Padres are going to be this, you know, postseason powerhouse for at least two seasons. If you want to be conservative, you might say three or four, but I'm going to put it at at least two seasons. But I do believe that Manny Machado will make an immediate impact, and yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, I guess, this season. Now, on to Bryce Harper. He got a 13-year, $330 million deal from the Philadelphia Phillies. This was a must pick up for the Phillies. Um, I can't remember if it was their GM, I think it was, who said they were going to spend stupid money this offseason. This qualifies, but there was a chance early in the offseason that, that they could have gotten both Machado and Harper. Didn't happen that way, but they got Harper. That's a huge deal. Um... They signed Aaron Nola to an extension. The Phillies, here's the thing. The way the deal is structured, Har Harper's still getting a crap load of money. But the way it's structured is he gets a little bit less as the years go on. And that helps the Phillies. So Harper's still going to get loaded. We know Harper's talent. He's going to be an amazing player wherever he goes. But for the Phillies, it allows them the financial ability to go out and get several other players. Or it allows them to go get a Mike Trout next season. I'm just saying, it's not out of the question. Um, but Bryce Harper makes an immediate impact. This is a good team already. They had a really good first half last year before the floor kind of fell out from underneath them. Um, but the future is bright in Philly. They've got good pitching. They've got overall a good team. Now they have Andrew McCutcheon, who they got for... I don't remember the exact deal. But it was a fairly, it was a fairly low budget deal. And now they have Harper. Pair him up with Reese Hoskins. That's that's quite a 3-4 combination. But they're also a young team. So I'm not saying they're not contenders for the NL East this season. But a deep postseason run? I don't know. That, I think... I think in large part... A deep postseason run depends on how, number one, on how their pitching is. Because other than Aaron Nola, there's really not a lot of other big names in that rotation, even in the bullpen. I don't know. 
I'm trying to think. I can't think of any one guy who really stands out to me in the Philly, in the Phillies bullpen. And if Philly fans, if you're watching, if there's a guy out there, comment section. Because, you know, that only makes the show better. <clears throat> uh, now, I think the Phillies have a better chance of making a deep postseason run than the Padres. But, I still think, listen, the NL East is going to be a super competitive division with the exception of the Marlins, who just are, Marlins fans, I feel bad for you guys. You're going to go through at least another three seasons of just absolute garbage. But for Atlanta, the New York Mets, the Philadelphia Phillies, and the Washington Nationals, that's that's a division that everyone should watch because it's going to be super competitive. The Nationals have had a quietly good offseason. They picked up Patrick Corbin. They've re-signed a few other guys who are really good. Um, like I say, the Phillies, they re-signed Aaron Nola. They got Bryce Harper. You pair him up with Reese Hoskins, that's, you know, a combination that hits anywhere between on a down year, 50 home runs. On a good year, who knows, upwards of 80, 90 home runs a year between the two of them. Now that might be a bit generous, but you get the idea. Even on a down year, they're still really good players. The Mets have made moves all over the place. They got Robinson Cano, Edwin Diaz. Um, they've been making moves left and right. And the Braves are the reigning NL East champions. So they got Josh Donaldson. Uh, who else did they get? I don't know of anybody else that they got off the top of my head, but... They're the defending NLE's champions, so that puts a little bit of pressure on them to repeat. So, it's going to be a fun division to watch. Keep your eyes on them. Keep your eyes on the Phillies. That could be, if they don't make it into the, um, if they don't win the division, I definitely see them as a potential wildcard team. So... Keep your eyes on them Phillies. I think that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate y'all. Much love. Um, I will try and do this more often. They, The videos probably won't be this long. Or I'll try not to make them this long. But... You never know what's going to happen. So... Uh, we'll try and get some NCAA March Madness in here, maybe. Uh, I have an app, ESPN Tournament Challenge, which, if you fill out online brackets, this should be one of them. Uh, gives you all sorts of news on the NCAA. Let's see, news? Yes. Beautiful. You can read up on all NCAA Tournament news. Um, here, I'll just kind of give you a brief rundown. Bracket cast, that's any games that are going on in the NCAA tournament, they'll be here. Uh, this is the news. There's a ton of articles to read on here about the NCAA tournament. So, it's a really cool app for all of you college basketball junkies and otherwise, the otherwise would be myself. So, uh, it's a really cool app. You should go get it. Now, I think we're done. So, without any more further ado, love you guys. Take care. And as always, stay clutch.